to Durham, and uh, because of uh, COVID and whatever it is, and uh, well, I'll tell you when I get back from the show. <laughs> Take your time. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Am I annoyed? No, 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 you're not. Just like, I can rib you so much. just don't know if rabbis are allowed to reach around congregants. I don't think there's any rule about that in the Torah. Let's make one. <laughs> all right, in all seriousness, uh, okay. there was an article by Rabbi David Lau, who was the Ashkenazi chief rabbi of Israel, and he, his father was chief rabbi too, let him rest in peace, and the same thing with the Sephardic chief rabbi. So this is where the chief rabbinate stops being just a political thing and starts being a family business. But uh, Rabbi Lau, and this man has been chief rabbi for, anybody know? Because I don't, at least, at least 15 years. And this is the first time I ever heard him rule on anything in terms of halacha, Jewish law, which is what generally rabbis are supposed to do. But the truth is that these rabbis are not distinguished for their scholarship. They're distinguished for their political acumen. And he said that you are allowed to touch the mezuzah but you're not allowed to kiss your hand. Touching the mezuzah, and you can take this with however many grains of salt you wish, is, uh, as I said, halacha meteorita, that is, it, it is Torah law. But kissing your hand is just a minhag, it's a custom. And I'm wondering where he got this information. So my feeling is, we will do the following. We will leave the mezuzah where it is. Underneath we will hang a little dispenser of Purell. So you will touch the mezuzah, do the Purell, rub your hands together, and then kiss your hand. It'll take, take a little alcohol. longer, but think of all the time it'll give you. Right, right. Yeah, yeah Purell is turning into uranium these days. Right. That's number one. In all seriousness, once again, carrying the Torah around, touching the Torah, and kissing your hand. I love the Torah. The Torah is the center of our worship and our belief, but in terms of germs, it is a Petri dish covered mm -hmm. with a cloth. Mm -hmm. So you ha do have some options. If you're wearing the talit, you kind of thrust the talit <laughs> towards the Torah and then kiss the talit. You kiss the talit if it is a shul talis and not a personal talis. No. No. The other way around. no. Right. Don't kiss the shul talis. And that uh, thing I say all the time about sharing out your tzitzit, sorry, Charlie. Bring your own tzitzis. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just a very odd situation. They don't even know at this point how long the virus can live on a piece of paper. That's right. And I, right. I dare say it can live indefinitely on a piece of cloth. And it says that it's mostly being, they think it's mostly being transferred by handling cash. Oh, oh well, yeah. that would yeah. never happen here. I well, the <laughs> they, 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 they said tonight in the news they yes. put the cash in the, there. Yes, Doreen, something. No, they said on the news tonight the cash coming back into the country. They were um, putting it in a safe place for like 30 days. I, I will be happy to volunteer. I <laughs> will <laughs> 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 to be a safe place for cash. Yes, I am. Right. My son lives in New York in New Rochelle. Young Israel, Israel is closed. What is closed? Young Israel, young Israel is closed. Oh, boy. Maybe they'll come here. <laughs> yes. Which is conservative. They're not going to have services also. Really? Yeah. I think that's a little extreme. Really? Really? Yes, now. Yes. Just contacted the virus. Ah. Yeah, it's, it's a sad thing, and they say it's not over yet, and uh, who was the big shot doctor who was a national treasurer? Fauci. Fauci? Fauci yeah. Yes, Fauci. He was on tonight. Yeah. Oh, okay. I like him. I, I think he's a straight shooter. And I'm not, you know, trying to panic or anything. Oh, they say that children, um, small children, may harbor the virus, but they do not become ill, because one of the curiosities of childhood in this country is that um, children get flu shots, they're exposed to so many different bugs that they seem to be somewhat resistant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, well, I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much. I notice that you're all a safe distance away from me. Um, <laughs> I don't take it personally. <laughs> and Purim is coming, which is uh, our, what, easily our strangest Jewish holiday. No, I'm sure they're a second month or something. <laughs> But you'll notice in, in Megillot Esther and in the bulletin this Shabbat, I treated you to a rendition.
so I thought it would be nice to hear from her Good for a job. change. But uh, what I also have here <laughs> is the New Oxford Annotated Bible, which has anything you could want. It's got the, uh, Jew the Hebrew Bible, the Christian Bible, the Apocrypha, the Deuterocanonicals, which I find very comforting. And I do want to thank, well, this is probably the wrong place to say this, but I want to thank the Catholics for preserving these writings uh, during the Middle Ages and beyond. Because as far as we Jews were concerned, the Apocrypha, for example, were known as the Sepharim HaChitzonim, the outside books, because uh, we didn't accept them as kosher or holy. Frequently, I'll give the example of the books of the Maccabees. There's the first and second books of the Maccabees. They were very, the rabbis who canonized the uh, Torah I think second century, but I don't mind being corrected, uh, believed it was too pro-Roman because the Romans were not very nice uh, to the Jews. It's, it's all politics, politics and religion. But I do have a, a presentation of the Book of Esther here, and who are the four principal uh, characters of the Book of Esther? Esther, good. Haman. Haman. Uh, extra credit for saying the king's name. Uh, Stuart name? Pepper. <laughs> yes, yes, as portrayed. Oh, cool. oh, yes, and please, you must come to our Purim Spiel because everybody is very dedicated. And um, it was fun watching the rehearsal tonight. And I understand that the uh, theater critic from the New York Times will be with us uh, on Friday evening. We're taking it to Broadway. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes indeed. Okay, uh, but as far as this is the what is significant about this book? Who does not appear? God. Oh, yes, God. very good. Why is that? He was on vacation. Yes, <laughs> but if you look, okay, in my first show we had a traditional Megillah. It was it was serious. It was in an olive wood case, and in the top right hand corner <coughs> of each column it said Hamelech. Hamelech means the king. Now obviously the king is a Hashverosh, but um, when it was. The way it was laid out, they said, oh, no, no, it's the king, you see. Uh, Ahasuerus, uh, the reason he's got his name written that way, he's actually Artaxerxes, okay? And I'm not sure it's <coughs> possible his father was Darius, uh, but we don't know. The truth is that you, you cannot put the Book of Esther into a historical context because there is no <coughs> record in Persian court records of any uh, Persian king having a Jewish consort and what else? Um, well, I can't say anything about Haman. This, this whole idea of being a, an Agabi. Do we know about that? Haman was an Agagite. Can I try he saying that five Agabite. times fast? I what? thought he was an Amalekite. Right. Agag, very good, was the king of Amalek. And he appears in the uh, first book of Samuel. It's a very dramatic episode. Saul, as you know, was manic depressive, poor fellow. And uh, Samuel the prophet, he was the last of the prophets, he was the last, no, he was the last of the chieftains, he was the last of the shoftim, the judges. Uh, he was a, a chieftain, he was a prophet, and he was a Kohen Gadol. So Samuel was the whole package. But as many emeriti can, can attest, it's very hard when the congregation comes to you and says, you know, Rabbi, we're replacing really? you because you're old. I ran into that in my first pulpit, uh, the rabbi there, let him rest in peace. Uh, every Shabbos, wow. I would be the one in the front, and he would be sitting behind me on the bima, huffing and puffing like he wanted to blow me down or perhaps up, and always with useful suggestions for the opposite of whatever it was I was doing. Finally, my parents came to visit. My old man had dealt with a number of rabbis in his experience, so uh, when services were over, he took the emeritus aside and said, in effect, why are you picking on my kid? <laughs> and the rabbi made a helpful suggestion. He said, let them get a hold. They have a luach. They have a schedule of a particular Shabbat. If the davening is not as usual, this booklet, this, this lectionary, if you will, will tell you what is different and what to do. So I've been using it ever since. Then uh, the cantor came. We got that fancy schmancy thing with the uh, green coils that I had never seen before. I don't know if I like these newfangled things. All right. So uh, anyway, as far as being, okay, Artaxerxes, there's, there's no, but I, I need your help on this one. Relationship between Mordechai and Esther. Uh, uh -huh. Multiple choice. Uncle. Cousin, uncle, or father? Uncle. Uncle. Who's her cousin, really? Oh, no, no. Yeah, sorry. Mm. 
Yeah. In Alan's mm -hmm. presentation, he's all three. Well, I know. Cousin, I, uncle and father. I know. I left no, t no stone unturned. <laughs> you can't be sure. I don't know if she called him daddy or uncle or cuz. Probably she just called him Morty. <laughs> all right. So anyway, uh, when the story opens, everything is happy in Shushan, the capital of Persia. Now, why were the Persians much better than the Babylonians? So was it the cooking? politics or the fact of deportations. They, they said it was okay for the Jews to return to uh, Israel if they wanted to. Right, what we call Shivat Sio. Now mind you, the Persians are the foremost empire on the face of the planet at the time, mm -hmm. and the Jews were living there for a number of years. They've been living there since the Babylonians exiled them and destroyed the first temple in 586 BCE. But um, did the Jews want to go back to Israel, which was totally devastated no. by war? So why not stay in Persia? You've got a two-car garage, you've got a lovely microwave, you've got an in-ground pool, your kids are accepted in public school, and there's no problem with getting off for the high holy days, so why not? That's why Persia, otherwise known as Iran, uh, had the largest Jewish population, I suspect, in, in, in the world, or at least the Middle East, back in those days. And there's one now. <laughs> Happy little virgin girl. Robert Graves wrote um, this poem about the Battle of uh, Thermopylae. He said, he called it the, per the Persian version. Um, bada boom. Okay, so uh, <laughs> when the story opens, Vashti is the queen, and the king is a big party boy, and he has parties lasting for months at a time with no end of drinking. That's why this is the only <clears throat> holiday on which Jews are commanded to get drunk. You're supposed how drunk? You're supposed to be so drunk that you can't tell the difference between Arur Haman or Barach Mordechai. Cursed is Haman, and blessed is Mordechai, and you reverse it to say uh, Arur Mordechai Ubaruch Haman. That is, cursed is ha is Mordechai, and, and blessed is is uh, Haman. Okay. Uh, there's a story in the Talmud. I think it's Rabbi Zera, and I can't remember the other fellow's name. But they get drunk on Purim. And as people sometimes do when they're drunk, they get into a fight, and one of them pulls out a knife and cuts the other one's throat and kills him. And then he's very upset indeed. So he prays that the rabbi killed. too, the dead rabbi, should recover, and the dead rabbi does indeed. Bezrat Hashem, with the help of the Lord God Almighty. See, I, I tell these things, right? And you believe me, because I'm a rabbi. Uh, no, we don't. Anyway, <laughs> no, this is in the Talmud. You can look it up. Uh, he prays, and Rabbi number two, the dead one, comes back to life. Not bad, huh? And the next year, Rabbi one, the killer, says to Rabbi two, the dead guy, um, hey, how about we get drunk again this Purim? And Rabbi two says, no, thank you. A miracle may not happen this time. So, <laughs> okay. So he's drinking and drinking, and about 180 days into the party, and nobody's taking a rest break, uh, he decides it would be wonderful for his then queen, Vashti, to appear before the assembled multitude wearing her crown. And nothing else. And nothing else. And nothing else. You know, it doesn't say that in the text, but this is an <laughs> assumption that folks have been making for generations. And what does Vashti say? No. Yeah. No. But what do the rabbis say? There's a legend, there's a midrash, that the re she would have done it. But God caused her skin to break out in one of those terrible diseases that they're always advertising cures for um, in between the program that you really want to watch. You notice there are a lot more programs like that these days? Uh, she had eczema or something. Anyway, she doesn't come. And because Ahasuerus is such a dunce, does he decide himself or does he call upon his seven wise men? Seven wise men. Seven wise men. I can't remember all their names. It's Muhammad, Muhan. They've all got names Khan. Okay? And they say, not only has Vashti done this to the king, but she has disgraced every man who's married in the entire kingdom. Therefore, let it be proclaimed that Vashti shall no more present herself before the king, and that every man should be the ruler in his own house and speak the language of his people. Azoy. Now, why does that make men look stupid? Which is not unusual. When did that change? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in perpetuity. Yes. Pro probably when the Persians were driven out by the Greeks and the Greeks didn't swing that way. Okay, anyway. 
what was it? Uh, okay, so does she get executed or exiled? Exiled. What would you prefer? <laughs> get your head chopped off or be given a passport? Exiled. Yes. Well, we don't know. She vanishes from the story. That's very biblical because they don't tell you anything more than you need to know. And the days go on, and it's a little chilly in the royal bed of nights. So what does the king decide? Right. He, and they say, let's have a pageant. Okay. Now, because everybody here is over 21. Is it a pageant or a dry run? Dry run. Dry run. That was quick. <laughs> yeah, probably. And uh, Esther doesn't want to go. And her uncle, father, cousin says, honey, sweetie, baby, you got to do this. And she says, oh, but father, where will I get kosher food in the palace? And that's what they say she ate beans, which might have been another reason why the king didn't come close to her terribly much. Uh, but she, she's really the first recorded vegan in Jewish. It's not history. It's, it's in Jewish. Okay. And uh, probably she ate beans. So let's see, let's see. Ooh, ooh, extra credit question. Why do you eat uh, peas and beans in a house of mourning? I didn't know we eat peas and beans in the house of mourning. I never heard of it. Oh, oh, Arbus, Arbus. Garbanzos. Garbanzos is the Yiddish name, yes. Chickpeas. Right. Chickpeas is the Spanish name. I thought you brought that out at the bris. I thought you brought that out at the bris. You bring that out at the bris because you can't, you can never eat just one. It's a symbol Why of plenty. Garbanzo is a Yiddish word? Yes, yes it is. I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's why a West Side Story is... Well, never mind. Right. Arbus. What? I'm sorry? Robin Arbus. Arbus, Arbus, yes. Arbus, yes. So why is it in a house of mourning? You never oh, it? because they're round. Sarus rolls from one person to another. Like that? I took a very... Eggs at the, at the ship, at the ship. You saw them at the ship. No, you're supposed to have hard-boiled eggs. Well, those yeah, roll too. Around. Yeah, and to I the just made that. Right. <laughs> yes. Right. It was not unusual in the old days. During a shiva, they would take brown things out of the house and roll them on the lawn. This was very traditional. Really? Did you make that up too? I made that up too. Egg rolls. But on Easter, they got a hold of that. They said, look what the Jews are doing. Let's do it in the white And they decorate Right. Okay. That, but my father, see, we used to go to shul for um, the Mincha Myra, the afternoon on Shabbos. And uh, they had Shalashidas. They had the third meal of Shabbos. And what are some of the, uh, I love these names. You know, it's Shalosh Siudot, the third meal, three meals. And Shalashidas. I don't even, what, what part of Europe is that? Yiddish. But it's Shidas. It's like, I don't know who that is. It's, it's Greek, maybe. All right, so my old man, I would say, Dad, look, they have water challah. See, nobody has a water challah anymore. Remember water challah? It was pale. Egg challah is egg looking. Water challah looks like it's, it's, it's albino challah. This is a lost art. What you do is you bake the challah without the eggs. Is it possible to bake the challah without the eggs? Yes. 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 Okay. I made it. Oh, see, there you go. But it wouldn't Put, be as good. It, it really is not bad. It's, it's, it's like a Spartan challah. Oh, we, we, we suffer as Jews. We keep the eggs out of the challah because they're busy rolling them on the front lawn. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, they're all eating the water challah, and they have big plates of arbus, and they're learning Torah. And I, of course, being an avid Torah scholar, I said, Dad, can I, can I sit in with them? Says, they don't wash their hands. Who knows where their hands have been? <laughs> okay, hi, baby. I love uh, okay. I love I'm now 21, yeah. Yeah, well, that's all right. I won't say it. If I say anything off color, I'll say it in Spanish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right, so where are we now? Vashti is gone. He has the pageant. She has to eat the beans. That kind of got us off on the wrong, t the wrong foot. And where was I after that? Okay, ooh, so as long as Esther is in office, so to speak, in between head cuttings off and being exiled, he says, um, Mordechai says to her, I will sit between the pillars. Okay, you know the pillars? That's where you put your head at night. 
or he'll sit between the pillars and she'll send him out a daily report. And while he's sitting there one day, it's a big pillar, he's on one side of the pillar. Which two scapegrace ne'er-do-wells are on the other side of the pillar? Their names are Big Tan and Teresh, okay? And they are planning an assassination on the king, which is a bad thing. So Mordechai tells Esther, Esther tells the king, Big Tan and Teresh are executed in some grisly fashion, and the, rec the record is put into the royal diary. On such and such a day, Mordechai the Jew, it's always nice to know who you are, <laughs> saved the king from assassination and did not receive a reward. That's very key. That's the red herring. Do we understand the red herring? Mm -hmm. That's the Dag Maluach Adom. Okay. Did you know that red herring came from Judaism? No, it didn't. It's a, it's a British thing. I'll tell you later. Okay, so that's a very good thing. Then things move along, move along, and, and the king appoints who as the prime minister? Haman. Haman. Uh, yes, and gives him. <laughs> yes, very good. Okay, is that Mr. Bad Example? No, I'm kidding. All right. Uh, he uh, makes him the prime minister, and Haman, why does Haman hate the Jews? He had a Jewish wife. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. Why did he go? Sorry, why did he go? Who, Haman? He was converted or something. Really? This is no. Tell yeah. me this one. That's what I... Just made it See, up. as good as I. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I really didn't. <laughs> no, I, no he, he hates the Jews because Jews exist. This is how we cause anti-Semitism. We exist. You see? It's, it's sad. But and there's a story that he and Mordechai were in the army together, and Mordechai saved his life, well, and Haman never got over birth, it. First, I got a whole different, I got a whole story. Oh, what you got? Uh, something he was. Is, it, is that not bold. right? He's in bold. He was what? what? That Mordechai is in bold. Oh, bow. Yes, oh, because right. what is Haman wearing around his neck? A rotary uh, medal, a big yashki, or an idol? An idol. Yes, very good. Yashkis are not around yet. Okay. So anyway, I didn't say that. Uh, yes, yes, okay. I, I, I get in such trouble and I apologize already. I should have apologized at the beginning. That would have saved me a lot of grief later on. And Mordechai will not bow. But let me ask you, in terms of patriotism and respect for the office, which I hear a lot, uh, shouldn't he have bowed to, what's his name, just out of respect, being the prime minister? No. Not if you're Jewish, no. See, uh, situation ethics, would you have done it out? No. Well, from the comfortable distance of centuries, I'd say you're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, whatever it is. So uh, Haman goes to uh, Hashverosh and says, Your Majesty, there is a strange, scattered people living among your people. Their customs are not your customs. Their ways are not your ways. So therefore, your majesty, I beg that you give me permission to eliminate, destroy, and otherwise rid the kingdom of these people. And the king, being half blitzed most of the time, says, do so, only do not lay your hand on the spoils. That would be my department. And he gives him a ring. The ha'ir shushan nabocha. What's the word nebuch? Nebuch. What's nebuch? It's a shame. I, in Hebrew, it's a miskain. Oh, it's a shame. Look at that. It's like the guy who goes to the tailor and he has the custom made suit. This is a big deal. And he gets the suit back in a couple of weeks and he puts on the suit and he says, What's the matter with you, Mr. Taylor? He says, This sleeve is too long. This sleeve is too short. The pants are all off to the side. And it, it, it's very uncomfortable. And the tailor says, don't make yourself into a tzimis. When you walk down the street, you walk down like this. <laughs> <laughs> and he's walking like that, the poor nebuchol. He's a nebuchol. And um, two people look, and they say, oh, it's such a, such a shame that man, he's so handicapped. He says, yeah, but look at that suit. <laughs> so, that's a nebuchol. But in Hebrew, and this is the first, it's not the first time, they did it in the Torah also. But the city of Shushan, the king and Haman sit down to drink to celebrate their pact. But the city of Shushan is Nebuchadnezzar, is, is Nabucha. 
okay? Because a, a city is feminine. All right. So afterwards, what happens is that uh, the king, uh, oh, the king has a dream? Does he have a dream there? Yes, yes, good, good, good. Um, he has a dream, and in the dream, uh, he doesn't understand. It wakes him up, and he can't get back to sleep. So because he hasn't got a computer, he hasn't got an iPad, he hasn't got a cell phone, he calls the royal secretary to read to him from the book of Chronicles of the kingdom of King Ahasuerosh. And the royal secretary comes in with this massive tome and puts it down on his lap. Now this is where the rabbis stuck in a midrash. They stuck in a legend. Maybe you would know this legend. The angel. is an angel comes down. The angel wants the secretary to read the section of the book where it says, Mordechai the Jew saved the Rosh and did not get rewarded, etc., etc. And the secretary is going like this, and the angel is going like that, and the secretary is like this, and the angel is like that, and finally the king says, would you read me something already? I'll fall asleep from this. Isn't that the idea? Okay. And he reads that on such and such a day, um, Mordechai saved the life of King Ahasuerosh from the evil machinations of Big Tan and Teresh, and Ahasuerosh says, huh, whoa, who, who remembers? Was he rewarded? No, your majesty, it doesn't say he was rewarded. Which of my officers is in the court? Who's in the court? Amen. 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 He says, let him come in. He says, what shall be done, says the king, to a person whom the king wishes to honor? And Haman says, whom should the king wish to honor, if not myself? He says, let him ride your horse, let him wear your, uh, your robes, let him wear your, your crown. And Ahasuerus says, excellent idea. Go forth and do this too. And Haman is uh, leaning forward with his tongue hanging out to Mordechai. And Haman falls down. He's not good. Then, but he has to listen to the king. He goes, the robes, the, the crown, the horse, puts him on, he's on his way. And he has to walk in front of him saying, thus shall be done for the man whom the king wishes to honor. But then they walk past another midrash. They walk past his house where he lives with his ten sons and their various families. It's very crowded. There are only so many people you could fit into a one and a half uh, room apartment in downtown Shushan. It's very difficult. They're thinking of moving to Trump Village. Okay. So anyway, what happens is that Zeresh, Mrs. Haman, is looking out the window of their little pied a terre on the third floor with no balcony. To, to get a balcony, you had to give up a bathroom. Okay. So, and she sees from afar, because she's very nearsighted, a man leading another man on a horse. And who does she figure is riding the horse? Amen. And who is leading the horse? Amen. You can't oh, ride and lead at the same time. Oh, it's, a it's a miracle. It's a miracle, yes. <laughs> As the horse. Okay, so she takes a, bu a bucket of slops and she dumps it on the head of the person she thinks is Mordechai. And who is it? Amen. Oh, I left out the fasting. Okay. Fasting into it. The fasting. She fasts. And she's all pale. If you look at the Renaissance paintings of, of Esther, you'll see she's very pale indeed. She's also very zoptic. They like them like that in the Middle Ages. Okay, in the Renaissance. And um, she fasts because Mordechai said, you've got to tell the king that we're in danger. And she says, oh, but the king has not sent for me for lo these 30 days. And if I go to him without permission, I will surely be eliminated. He says, honey, this is why you became the queen. If you do not save us, our salvation shall surely come, come from another quarter. Like, for, for instance, the Israeli Air Force. But if you, this is the reason you became queen. So she says, well, she says, I and my maidens will fast, and uh, if I perish, I perish. I was supposed to be a Hashverosh in the first grade. My mother went so far as to make me a Scotch plaid cape, which, as you know, is the traditional Persian colors. <laughs> she also took some, she glued uh, cotton to the, to the border, and she dabbed it. She put little dots with black liquid shoe polish, which, of course, is ermine. Do we remember ermine? Uh -huh. yeah. Except, yes, especially if it's cotton with shoe polish. <laughs> so I got sick that day and I never made it. But I came back in the sixth grade. She made the cape longer. And my queen was, um, well, I'm not going to say her name with that. Uh, her initials were <laughs> CF. And I was totally in love with her in the sixth grade. When she came by, my heart beat pit a pat And she shows up, that's right, she shows up <laughs> at school that morning 
with a monstrous sty. She had a zit that took off ha took over half her face. And there went the romance out the window. Oh, wow. Well. Shallow. <laughs> I was in the sixth grade, okay? I really was not in a position to make a long commitment. Men. It's not until the seventh grade. Like you. But my line was, Achat shayim shalosh, ani achash verosh, sharvit zahav min bayad, de keter al harosh. One, two, three, I am a Hashverosh. I have a golden scepter in my hand, a crown upon my head. Back to the scepter. She fasts, she's looking all pale and beautiful. Actually, she looks, as my mother would say, like death warmed over. And she comes into the throne room, and she was not summoned, but she's thrilled to see, here it comes, you can be as Freudian as you want. The king extends his scepter yeah. to her, and she touches the tip. <laughs> Everybody took that very well. Okay, in the sixth grade, that was, whoa! <laughs> he says, Esther, I love you so much. Uh, I'll give you even up to half the kingdom. Which half? And she says, come to a party tomorrow, just you and your prime minister and I, and they have the party. And he says, Esther, I love you, etc., etc., half the kingdom. She says, I want you to come to another party tomorrow, the next day. Who has a party before a party? You see, it's like, actually, no. As a Jew, I understand, sometimes we eat the meal before the meal, okay? <laughs> you gotta eat the meal before the meal because while well, you're waiting for the meal, you could, God forbid, die of hunger. That would be a bad thing. Somebody said to me, do Jews drink? I said, well, some do, but uh, really, food is our drug. Well, anyway, uh, the next day, I'll, I'll just do this little bit of drama and, and we'll finish up. That um, he says, Esther, I love you, etc., etc. What's, what's bothering you? I notice you're a little pale around the gills. And she says, oh, your majesty, if they were only coming from me, I would have not complained. I would have gone to my death happily. But this man is threatening our lives. And Ahasuerus says, me who ze the eze who, which I think is a wonderful bit of business. Who is this and which is this person? And Esther points with her quivering little finger and she has such cute little hands. And she says, this evildoer, this Haman, and he falls down on the ground, and he's crying, because the jig is up. In Hebrew, they say, ha jig hu up. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, hey. the king says, I can't take this. I must leave. And he goes out through the French doors. Now, did they have French doors in those days? No, no, no. there's no French. Only in French. French. <laughs> And he's out there in the garden, inhaling the eucalyptus and the sagebrush, or whatever it is they have there. Meantime, Haman throws himself on the couch opposite the queen. Ooh, and he begs her, your majesty, I, I implore you for my life. And the king comes in, and he goes, my couch, my queen, my prime minister. And Haman says, I can explain everything. But he calls in guards, calls in the guards, and they cover up his face. Why do they cover up his face? Who? Uh, bad guy, Haman. Uh, Russia. Did he cover the face of Haman? Mm. Yes, it's a very old custom. It was originated in Coney Island. Um, no. And the rest, as you know, goes very quickly. They, they, they kill his, uh, they murder, they murder. They execute his ten sons simultaneously and at the same time. And that's it, I just died. Um, and they have those names, Arisai, Aridai, Vaisana. Microphone, yes. Oh, I won't say them. Well, you're supposed to say them in one breath to show they all die at the same time and we don't gloat over our enemies. Just one more thing. On such and such a day, the 14th day of the month of the dawn, the Jews were supposed to be destroyed. But Everything is topsy-turvy, all the bad guys. Now, this is the kind of thing where you were on vacation in Maine. Remember that little gift shop? And you went in, there was a plaque that said, welcome to Maine. Rule one, the boss is always right. Rule two, if the boss is ever wrong, see rule one. <laughs> that was the same governmental situation under a Rosh. He couldn't rescind the previous decree that the Jews should be destroyed on the 14th. So instead, he slipped Mordechai the key to all the arsenals in, in, the, in the empire. And on that day, the Jews got a crack at all the weapons, and they were able to destroy their enemies. Who becomes the next prime minister? Mordechai. Mordechai. And they live happily ever after. after. Thank you so much. Shabbat shalom. I have a question.
Yes. If you're not supposed to gloat, then why do we do this whole pro this whole spiel thing? Because in a way, isn't that gloating over what happened? Um, uh, you're only not supposed to gloat over the death of the Egyptians because we're guests in their country for hundreds right. of years before the slavery period. Right, that, yeah. Otherwise, um, but then why wasn't he able to say the name of the sun? Because you don't say it on Shabbat. It's like that. Made that up too. You just don't say it. Yeah, yeah. But also, um, historically, you know, if your family. If you were saved from a gunpowder explosion, then you declare a personal family Purim uh, for your family. It's called Pulver Purim. And if, if you were saved from an attack of anti-Semites, you also have a personal Purim. Hmm. You might say, for example, that the Six Day War should have had a Purim after it, but it had a lot more than that. You see, but that's what Purim is supposed to be. Okay. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. I'll change your batteries. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, let's light the candles. All right, we wave our hands over the candles. Ata Adonai. Malik Shabbat Shalom. Someone from Uganda just said good job to us. He's from Uganda. Oh. Uh, back told us something like that. Do you have a system? Huh? System of okay. money. Page number 13. Shalom Aleichem, Malakei Hashalem, Malakei Eyon, Mi'ilelem, Malakei Hashalem, Kadosh Baruch Hu. Oyem Shalom, Malakei Hashalem,
Howard Shulman, Howard Electman, Seraphina Klein, Russell Schachter, Bart Reynolds, Bart Dozer, Kathy Rothstein, Harry Kahn, and Stanley Kahn. Chaim Yehuda Ben Mordechai and Jane Levinson. Bruce Martin, Carol Medina, Carol Custer, Sheila Dunn. James Bastasia. All right, uh, and of course we pray for the health and safety of the <coughs> folks who are suffering from the coronavirus, also the people all over the world, and our brothers and sisters in the state of Israel. Before mm -hmm. Reading together in the English paragraph, help us, heaven and I, to lie down in peace, and awaken us again, our sovereign, to life. Spread over us your shelter of peace, guide us with your good counsel, save us because of your mercy, shield us from enemies and pestilence, from starvation, sword, and sorrow. Remove the evil forces that surround us. Shelter us in the shadow of your wings, O God, who watches over us and delivers us, our gracious and merciful ruler. Guard our coming and our going. Grant us life and peace now and always. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Praise the Lord of mine, who spreads the shelter of peace over us, over all his people of Israel, and over Jerusalem and the entire world. Rosalenu sukach lomecha, baruch atah donai, borei sukach lomalenu v'al kol hamu Yisroel, v'al Yerushalayim, v'al kol haolam kulo. Amen. Thirty-four of the Shabbos. Amen. Amen. Shabbat by Nafash, Shabbat by Nafash, 
to all of you who are watching at home, and a special kiss to you in Uganda who are watching, and you in St. Petersburg who are watching. Everyone who is watching at home is part of our community, and I hope that you feel that way at home because we feel that way about you. I have wonderful things to tell you. Um, tomorrow, after our service, <laughs> Rabbi's class is going to be on. Uh, we've been hearing a lot about how might makes right, and we're going to do Frederick Nietzsche. Uh, he's a Ooh. philosopher, and uh, his, his stuff was misused, but we're going to look into that. Heavy duty and and interesting very interesting this past week um Cantor's thursday discussion group on uh, on the pasha of the week was fascinating too and it will be going on this week as well thursday after minion at 10 30. um a week from today is our purim celebration <coughs> come call the office come We've already gotten generous donations from some of our wonderful members to help support the evening. We so appreciate that. Um, but we're just going to have a really good time. And there's going to be a play. We had a rehearsal tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you want to come in costume, by all means, come in costume. We're just going to have a really good time. So make sure you come. Uh, March 31st, we have our uh, special event of Dr. Hodes, who has worked for 30 years in Ethiopia, the only spinal surgeon among 150 million people with a lot of problems there. And for 30 years, he has helped 
at no charge to cure, uh, operate on, and uh, help young children have a stable, good life. And we'll be honored to have him here. It's going to be a big event, so please do come. And then comes Pesach, April 8th. And come as well. Uh, we have the menus are, uh, are ready for you. You have to, to choose uh, out of four delicious meals. And um, our cutoff date for letting our caterer know how many people are coming <coughs> is April 1st, and which will be here before you know it. So please <coughs> sign up. Come and be with us and celebrate our holiday of freedom. I have something amazing to tell you. I had for the first time experienced going to a federation event last night. There were somewhere between six and eight hundred people there. And I must tell you that I am most proud now that our beautiful shul is part of that big federation community. We are part now through the acceptance of, of Temple and our wonderful board and um, a little hard work. We, we are now there and we are part of something really big and wonderful. And our Jewish community in Broward County is enormous and active and hardworking and speaking about anti-Semitism in our time. And they need our support and we need their support. And they are there for the entire Jewish community and we are there for them. So yay for Temple Shalom. I'm so proud that um, I, I played a part in that. And I wish you all a very sweet, healthy, safe, and wonderful Shabbat. Yeah. Okay. Now yes. Something about the talking No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, page 54.
Hashem. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make the sun shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord turn his face unto you and grant you peace. We say Amen. 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 Shabbat Shalom. 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 Shabbat